Where does the history of the Scottish Rite begin? Scotland, right? Wrong. The origins of Scottish Rite Freemasonry go back almost 300 years to London, England, when in the summer of 1717, four of the city's lodges banded together to form the Grand Lodge of England. One of the most gung-ho of the brothers just happened to be, you guessed it, a Scotsman. His name was Andrew Michael Ramsay. Ramsay left home for the bright lights of Paris and, tout de suite, got himself elected Grand Chancellor of one of the city's lodges. He was so devoted to the Fraternité and so eloquent in his praise that he motivated his French brothers to create more than a thousand degrees. Some of those degrees, perhaps in tribute to Ramsay, were called Ecosse, or Scottish degrees. In the mid-1700s, Stephen Moran, a wine merchant from Bordeaux, spread word of the Scottish degrees all the way across the Atlantic to the West Indies. And in 1767, Moran authorized Henry Andrew Franken to carry the degrees north to the colonies. In 1801, Colonel John Mitchell joined with 10 other gentlemen to organize a Supreme Council in Charleston, South Carolina. Meanwhile, in New York City, a brother named Antoine Bedeau was going around conferring all kinds of degrees. One small problem, Bordeaux didn't have the authority to confer any degrees, at least not in New York. Neither did a brother named Joseph Surnot, but that didn't stop him either. Colonel Mitchell was not amused. He ordered his subordinate, Emmanuel Delamata, to sort things out. Delamata decided in favor of Bordeaux's group. It became the first Supreme Council for the Northern Jurisdiction. Ever since then, the right has had both a Northern and a Southern Jurisdiction. The Supreme Council for the Northern Jurisdiction got off to a slow start, very slow. For 40 years, nothing much happened. During those lost years, a devoted brother, John James Joseph Gorgas, almost single-handedly kept the brotherhood alive. Then in 1860, as the right was just getting back on its feet, rivalry and jealousy threatened to knock the whole enterprise off its expanding backside. Sovereign Grand Commander Edward Asa Raymond wanted to keep the brotherhood the way it had been for the last 40 years, small and sleepy. But one of his deputies, Killian Henry Van Rensselaer, had other ideas, and he wasn't one to hang around biding his time. Like a Masonic Johnny Appleseed, Rensselaer crisscrossed the northern jurisdiction, planting new lodges wherever he went. His activism made Rensselaer very popular with the new brothers, but not with the Grand Commander. When Rensselaer's supporters moved to elect their man to a powerful committee, Commander Raymond quickly gaveled the proceedings to a close. But in the end, he wasn't fast enough. The opposing faction booted him out of office and replaced him with, you guessed it, his nemesis, Ben Rensselaer. The squabbling continued for another seven years, but eventually the warring factions made peace and reunited. For the next 60 years, with nary a ripple, the Council of the Northern Jurisdiction conducted business from its headquarters in New York City. But in the early 1920s, the council members decided it was time to make a move, a move to the cradle of liberty, the Athens of America, the hub of the universe. In short, to Boston. For the next 45 years, the Boston headquarters were located in the city's downtown. Then in 1968, the council decided to move again. This time, just across the Charles River and westward to Lexington, Massachusetts, where almost 200 years before, the venerable Minutemen had stood their ground against the British Redcoats. Only eight years later, as part of its bicentennial celebration of the country's birth, Scottish Rite opened the National Heritage Museum. It was a gift to the American people, a museum to open the minds of visitors to everything that makes Americans, well, American. And finally, in 2007, something happened that many doubters had doubted would ever happen. After more than 200 years, the northern and southern jurisdictions decided it was high time to hold their first joint session. And so they did. In Washington, D.C., for three days, in the heat of late August, brothers from north and south hobnobbed, hung out, and viewed each other's rituals. And you know what? No one could figure out why they hadn't done it sooner. Yours fraternally.